Well, good evening and happy Monday, everyone. This is Sharon Rankin and normally zooming in from Nashville, Tennessee, but tonight I'm in what my friend Nancy calls beautiful shallow Illinois, uh, heading to a meeting in St. Louis tomorrow, but we are delighted to welcome you to our Mission Possible call. We gather every single Monday night and really the reason for our gathering is to remember and really zone in on and focus on our mission which is inspiring healthy living around the world. And we are doing that so beautifully every single day as we're touching and changing people's lives with this beautiful message of health and hope with Juice Plus and what we're doing in people's lives. Each week when we come together, it is about reminding us of our purpose and it is to, to keep us zoned in, to keep us focused in on what's important in our mission. So thank you so much for being here. We are the Mission Possible team. And I love being a part of a company that's tried and true some 50 years old. So tonight we have a special guest. Uh, many of you and, and Angel Falk is um, bringing her team. So she needs no introduction to her team. But Angel is a brand new qualifying national marketing director, just qualified last month, and we're so excited <laughs> to have her share her story. But I think more than just that piece, which is a milestone in itself, is her life story of survival. She is a, a brain, a brain cancer tumor survivor. And more importantly, even than that, than the survivor, when you hear her story, you'll see what she did to survive and move forward in life. But she is a mom, she's a wife, and she loves to dance party. She is one dance guru girl and into fitness for sure and full of life and energy. And I love it when, and it especially touches me personally when I know people have had really serious life crisis and they live full out. And that is exactly what Angel is doing. She is living full out and, and really blessing and changing people's lives. So welcome, Angel, and thank you for being here. And you'll need to unmute. I got it. I got it. Thank you so much, so much. And, you know, the brain tumor was easy compared to other stuff, honestly. <laughs> and it was not cancer, but oh. due to the location, they treated it like cancer because I could have died. A lot of people... Um, with this type of tumor, die in their sleep, never know it. But I lost my hearing in 2006. I was a fitness instructor, loved working out, had two kids, happy as could be. My husband's a pharmacist. I was a stay-at-home mom. I had a pretty amazing life at this point. Um, the doctor did not know why I'd lost my hearing, and they really didn't do any other tests. I said, let's just keep an eye on it, which I always say, you know, get a second opinion. <laughs> if there is something going on in your body, that's a sign from God. You need to get it checked out. So um, a few years actually went by and it got worse and worse. And I was completely deaf in my right ear. And the doctor then, of course, ordered the MRI. It's a long story, but I got the MRI and I was devastated. There was a huge tumor on my brainstem growing into the brainstem it actually had tails intertwining the nerves keeping me alive and that's why i lost my hearing it crushed the auditory nerve after my 14 hour brain surgery i had lost my facial nerve that's why i have this and um, other issues i had to relearn to walk talk swallow i had every kind of therapy you can imagine right here at vanderbilt in nashville and um, God did miracles, you know, whatever you're going through. I just want to say, if you're ever going through a hard time, but we all will eventually, if you live long enough, just turn to God. He will get you through it. He will be your strength when you feel like you have nothing left. And I remember someone gave me a devotion called Streams in the Desert. And I, that ministered to me so much. You're shaking your head. Yes, I know that book. I mean, that was just really um a ministry to me. And when you were talking about me overcoming and being strong, I thought that's what God does. He takes your misery and turns it to ministry. You know, he takes all your trials and tests that you go through and makes it a testimony. If you let him, if you let him, he wants to do that through all of us, I believe, because that's what we're called to do. When you go through something hard and Debbie, who's on this call, said this the other day, if you're going through something hard, God wants you to use that to minister to somebody else. And that's what I want to do. I just want to help people. I want to help people know that they can be healthy. They can overcome. They can fight whatever they're going through. And I heard in a Bible study a long time ago, 
it was Beth Moore, and she said, God always heals you. It's either before you go through the fire. Sometimes we're healed, we don't even know it. Or two, maybe you do have to go through chemo or radiation or surgery and you, you overcome and you're healed. Or three, straight into the arms of Jesus. And to me, that just gives me the faith to pray with people for healing, no matter where they are, what stage of life they're in, and to believe with them. You know, the, the worst thing that can happen is we go to heaven, and that's probably the best thing that can happen. <laughs> so that's where I am with my faith. And when I was thinking about this call Sunday at church, yes, amen, Sunday at church, um, I was thinking, what am I going to say at this call? Because y'all know what to do. We all know what to do. But I think we need that daily motivation, inspiration. Just keep telling us. And I was thinking, I want to leave a legacy for my kids. I want them to know that I believed God. Just I want them to know their mama had faith that she believed God for crazy stuff. You know, for things that most people would not have the audacity to believe. And I just felt that I want to go after things, I, even if they're hard, every, in my health, my marriage, my business, I never want to quit. And when times get hard, that's what most people do. Most people quit, but I want to be known to my children that I never quit because I believed God. And um, that was the main thing that I got out of Sunday. Um, but it's funny, you talked about consistency chain. And when you wanted me sharing to share what, what are those things that I actually did, the day in and day out things, it really boils down to consistency. That's the key to success in every area of life. Um, but with the brain tumor, I just kept fighting. And I actually, when I went to the physical therapist, I took a CD of one of my last Zumba classes. Somebody said, let's video the class. And I said, okay. Um, so we videoed it and I took the physical therapist, this CD, I said, I have to be doing this. <laughs> and she was kind of like, okay. Um, but that was just how I am. And I think we all have to be that in our business. We make that decision. Like I couldn't walk, but I knew I was going to be doing Zumba. And I was actually doing Zumba eight weeks out. And they were like, you may not be able to teach classes for a year and a half. <laughs> so I was just determined. And I know by God's grace, I did that. Um, sadly, a year later, the tumor grew back, and that's when I had radiation. Um, it was awful. I had 27 treatments. I did really well throughout it, but then at the end, my hair fell out. I had these big spots on my face because the radiation was going to the back of my head. Um, they said, your teeth may fall out. It was all full, um, and I remember just thinking, I can't die because I have kids, and I want to live for my kids, and that was my why, really, for fighting and for staying firm. So you always have to have a strong why in, in anything, in your marriage, in your, in your family. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this business? You know, and sometimes you have to revisit that and think about it. But once I recovered from that, that's when I said, okay, I'm not healthy. What do you have to do to be healthy? There's something missing here. So I started doing my own research and every expert, every doctor all agreed on one thing, and that was you need more fruits and vegetables. And that's what I started trying to do. And my husband's a pharmacist. We had a closet full of vitamins. And I met a nurse named Rebecca Dorton. Some of you may know Rebecca. She's married now. She has a new last name. I'm so excited for her. But she told me um, that Juice Plus was not a vitamin, that it was fruits and vegetables in a capsule. And she invited me to an event. That's key, guys. Think about how you found out about Juice Plus and do that. She invited me to an event. Events are key. So I went, I heard a doctor explain it. I don't remember the doctor or anything. I remember they had a bowl of fruit out and they were talking about having fruit out for your kids after school and, and then give them the gummies and it all made sense. And so I said that day, sign me up. I want to get started. I want to get my daughter those gummies for sure, because she had stuff. And, and she said, well, you know, for $50, you can join as a rep and make money back. And I said, of course, that just makes sense. So that's how I got started. But she, she did introduce me to Maria. She did, um, you know, talk to me a little about the business, but I really just wanted to get healthy. So I didn't do anything really with the business. I even unsubscribed from the emails. 
<laughs> terrible because now they still cannot get emails to me because it was so long of a period. So I made it to Q and B with no emails. But anyway, we're working on that. But guys, I just really didn't want anything to do with that part of it. And then I started getting better and healthier and feeling great. And I told a few people who were having health things. And I saw, I did get a few customers because I knew my website. I knew how to get my own orders in there. Um, so we did that. And then when my kids were going into high school and college, um, I decided to go back to work full time because I had been teaching fitness classes. I loved it. But my husband had been working so hard, long hours, stressed out. And I felt like I needed to contribute some finances. So I went to work full time at Healthways, which is a place um, some of you may have heard of. It's in Cool Springs and Franklin. And it's a place where you're on the phone. I was a health coach for eight hours. I was on the phone with two computers and I had appointments every 10 minutes. I had to establish a relationship, talk about their last goal and then make a new goal. And it was stressing me out. I really, really was seriously stressed out. I won't go into all those details, but I ended up quitting. And it was right about that time when Dr. Odom saw my name on a report and he didn't know who I was. And he called me and he just introduced himself and he was very to the point. He said, do you want to make this a business? And I was like, yes, I do. It was God's timing. And sometimes it's not the right timing for people. And you have to understand that, but never give up on them, right? Always um, check in on people and ask them these simple questions because you never know when it's the right time. And I know Maria's always said, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person and you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. So just ask. And it was the right time. And he told me what to do. He said, get three people to join your team. And so I did, it happened really fast and I got to sales coordinator really quickly, but I stayed there for a long time, a long time. And I, I loved getting customers and helping and sharing. And I already had a pretty good following on Facebook because I started Facebook right before I was diagnosed. So once, and I'm a person, I just live out loud. That's just who I am. So when I Got started on Facebook. I connected with all my high school friends, elementary school friends, all of that. And then when I had the brain tumor, of course, I told them and they all were praying for me and helping me. And they really saw my journey. Um, and I know everybody's got a different story, but that's one tip I think I want to share with you guys is share your journey, share the up, share the downs, be real, be authentic, be you, because there's going to be people that will be able to relate to you if you're yourself. But if you're always putting on a show or if you're always trying to look perfect, they're not gonna relate to you. They're gonna be intimidated and not wanna talk to you or share with you. So anyway, that's um, how I got started and it just kind of grew, <laughs> but I was stuck. I had a lot of customers. I will say that I built a lot of customers, but as far as building team, I just, that I didn't know how to do it yet. And you don't know how to do anything in the beginning. You have to practice and fail and make mistakes. And I had a lot of people join me, but didn't stick to it because I wasn't good about taking care of them and, and, and helping them really. But when the COVID hit, <laughs> um, since COVID, I've had three promotions. It happened just so fast because when well, one thing I made up my mind, I was going to do it. And Really, if you're focusing on one thing, it's easy. And before I was teaching like 12 to 15 fitness classes a week. So when the gym shut down, you know, I was going on Facebook and let's work out. I was doing all that. People were messaging me. I just want to be around you because <laughs> I was positive. And that's one thing um, I think everybody could work on is just trying to be a little more positive. And if you surround yourself with positive people, it rubs off on you. It's contagious. So I had a lot of fun doing that. And during that COVID time, I would walk a lot. Well, I found out about this lady named Jessie Lee. I don't know if y'all know who she is, but she has a podcast. And someone, Debbie, on here actually told me about her. So I started listening to her. And it was like she was kicking my butt every day. 
And I knew if I was being lazy, if I did not want to talk to people, call people or message people, I need to listen to Jesse Lee. <laughs> so I would just walk my neighborhood. And then it also gave me the opportunity to call my team members. There are some that don't want to do Zoom, you know, or, or even text, but I would just call and those people have actually, I've seen them grow. And Dr. Odom told me this all the time, people need encouragement. And when we encourage, we're giving courage. You're giving them courage. And it's so fun to be on a call with somebody or be around somebody. And the next day they're getting orders or that night they're getting orders. It really makes a huge difference. And I still need to work on that. I want to get better at that, but I'm doing it. Um, and they say your mindset is 80% of your success. So whatever that is, if it's working out, eating healthy, your, your family life, whatever, it's 80% mindset. So every morning, and I've done this forever since I became a believer, I always get up, read my Bible, but I started adding to that. So I thought I'd just show you what I read every morning. I love Jesus calling. I read Jesus calling and I always read the scriptures with it. So I got Jesus calling in my Bible. And then I've got my mama's old devotion, God Calling, which was written before Jesus Calling. <laughs> so I got those. And then Christine Kane is a, um, she's a Christian entrepreneur, kind of a boss babe. She wrote this and I read this, um, just a page, not a whole lot. And then Dr. Caroline Leaf is all mm. about the brain. Yes. Yeah. She has a podcast. Okay. Yes. Follow her on Instagram. I learn a lot from her. Um, and I love that. And then it's good also to spend some personal development. And there's another book I'm reading just a tiny bit a day. It's, it's consistency doesn't mean hours and hours, but it's a tiny bit a day. So this one is a Joyce Meyer book and I love her. She'll give you a good kick in the pants too, if you need that. <laughs> and one other thing I did as far as mindset and reading is I had a book club. And I think I learned that from Ashley Hudson. I follow her on Instagram and she talked about having a book club. So I started doing that. And it, it was something that our team could invite anybody to come. Sideline buddies, anybody can come. And it's just fun to do it together and read together. But this book, it's called Dream It, Pen It, Live It by Terry Savelle Foy. I know Maria loves her too, but um, it's all about creating a vision board. And she teaches you how to write down your goals. Because you know, if you write things down, they're more apt to happen, like 60% chance more going to happen if you write it down. But she teaches you how to do that. So we did that. And I've been doing it, I guess, two or three years now, reading this book in January, doing a vision board. Um, writing out the goals and all of that just helps your mind because when you start saying your I am statements that's another thing I am and you just say what you want to be like I said I am a QNMD for a long time <laughs> but I knew it would happen eventually and those things just they really matter it's the law of vision the law of um, the written word I forgot what that is but anyway doing all those things made a huge impact. Also, another thing I did was a future forecasting letter. And that is a really cool thing. So I just pulled it out the other day. So at the beginning of the year, you date a letter, December 31st, okay? And then you write yourself a letter. I'm so proud of you for, and I said, for making QNMD. You know, I'm so proud of you for, and you just list out those things. And it, I, it was so cool finding that letter. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did that and that and that. And it just encourages you to inspire yourself and give yourself that courage. Um, some more people that I follow that I learned from Eric Worre. If y'all don't know who he is, he is amazing. His book, Go Pro. And he had a big event. And usually he does it in person in Las Vegas with all the top network marketing people, but he did it online because we're here in COVID, right? So some of my team and I did this free training and that's where I learned more about Jesse Lee. Um, and then there was a great lady named Coach Stormy. And I wanna warn you, she has a filthy mouth. <laughs> if you follow her, she's very ghetto. I mean, she's very ghetto, but she's so passionate and so hungry. 
for success. And I love her. I just love her. I love her story. I love everything she's overcome. I love to follow successful people and just learn how they got there. Um, and then Ray Higdon is another good one to learn about growing your business and Shalene Johnson. So I started just following these people on Instagram and learning. If they had free trainings on social media, I did it. And social media has been so good to me. I've met a lot of my team members, a lot of my customers from all over, all over the world. But I have someone in Australia and in the UK, and we met on social media, of course. Um, so it's just really a fun opportunity to get to know more people if you'll just be brave and make a lot of mistakes. And I'm still learning. I made a reel before I got on here and I'm still trying to get better at that. But guys, I've got several thousand people who've already seen it, who've already seen it. And I just made it before I hopped on here. So you don't have to be perfect and be the best, just do it. Um, another thing to be successful is to show up. Um, like those of you who were here tonight, you showed up, <laughs> so you should be proud of yourself and really engage, you know, take notes, listen, think about people, write their names down as you hear something, because everything you learn, you're really called to teach it and pour it into other people. So when you show up to the team meetings and the Zooms, even if you don't have anybody else there, you're going to have takeaways to go and share it. And then, of course, you're leading by example. And Dr. Odom told me, he said, you are an NMD, act like it. <laughs> so you got to pretend you are that person. And I think about aerobics in um, my teaching days. I remember learning about having the first class. Everybody's scared to death to go to the first class and teach. We were wearing leg warmers probably back then. But um, she said, when you walk in that room, act like you know what you're doing. It, they don't know it's your first class unless you tell them. So you just got to act like what you want to be. If you want to be an NMD, if you want to be a sales coordinator, you just got to be the part. And if you show up for these meetings and you show up for these events, your team will see you and they'll follow you. And I've seen that so much with my team. I'm trying to help them grow. If they're not showing up, their team's not going to show up. If they quit taking their juice plus, their team's going to quit taking their juice plus. And it's just a ripple effect. So I'm, I'm learning definitely the value of that. Um, keep your calendar, keep your calendar full of important things and carve out those meetings because other stuff will come up. It always does. It's like your workouts. You got to schedule it in or it won't happen. So make sure you're scheduling in the important things. Um, something else I did during the COVID um, all this lockdown stuff was have one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with my team that wanted to move up. Um, so those that want it, I love just being there for them. It was a lot of fun. We built our relationships. So sometimes you just got to look for the blessings <laughs> of being locked in a house. Um, and one thing Maria taught me was don't choke the baby. And that's one thing I was doing. Have y'all heard that? Don't choke the baby. That's one thing I was doing without realizing it. I was wanting to give them information, get on Voxer, do this, do that. And she would say it like a baby. They'll open their mouth when they're hungry and you give them a little bit and you see how they do. And if they keep opening their mouth, you keep giving it to them. But the minute they turn away, you kind of back off. So I'm learning to do that better because I think everybody wants to reach the top level, but not everybody does. And we're all in different season of life. So you want to reach people where they are. I'm learning to get better at that. And then teach your team and teach yourself to be confident, not just confident, because when you're confident, it can come and go, you know, according to how you're feeling sometimes. But if you're confident, you know that you're doing what God's called you to do. So it doesn't really matter what other people think. I mean, you know, maybe I'm just speaking to a few of you. I don't know, but that really helps me. If I know that God has called me to do this and I've made that decision, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on. And that is one thing that I learned from Eric Worre. He said he was interviewing these different millionaires in network marketing. And this cute young couple, they were probably 30 years old. They were already millionaires. And the guy said, if I could leave you with two tips, one is to work harder than anybody on your team. And then two is never quit. And that sounds so simple, but it's so true. And I've gone back to it a few times. 
um, because it does get hard and you get so much rejection and I, it's like your Rocky Balboa. You just keep getting punched and punched and you're like, how much can I take? But, you know, Rocky always got back up somehow. And um, Maria taught me this too: discipline your disappointments. You're going to get disappointed a lot. And so it's okay to be disappointed. That's normal. Cry, fuss, talk to your upline, your support team, um, and then move on. Because the longer you sit in it, the longer that's going to keep you from reaching your goals. And the, the longer it just makes you feel bad. And why feel bad? You know, think about the people who love you and care for you and support you. And then that will keep you going. Um, I think I am just about covering all of my tips. Have fun with your team. Y'all know I like to have fun. If y'all haven't read the Enneagram book, my team did that in one of our book clubs. And I'm a seven, which means I have to have fun. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and there are some things that are not fun, but you do them anyway because of discipline. But if you can schedule in some fun times with your team, have a dance party, have a wine and wellness, something that just makes everybody feel happy and laugh because... They say that's what people remember. They don't remember what you say, but what how you make them feel. So if you're having fun and you're laughing, people are going to want more of that. So definitely keep that going. And then also use your upline. You do the three-way calls. Do the um, three-way Zooms. Let them speak um, for your people because it also is, um, what is that word? Duplication. It's duplicatable. Because when people join, they're not going to know anything. <laughs> just like <laughs> none of us do. But if we can just encourage people, meet Maria, meet Dr. Odom, you know, if we can put them in front of um, another expert, that third party validation is really powerful. So I've probably been talking way too long. Oh, thank you, Angel. What a blessing. And I knew that you were going to be blessing everybody so beautifully tonight. Absolute blessing. And then I want to stop just a minute. And I want to say thank you, Dr. Odom, for reaching out to Angel and being faithful to really reach out to Angel and then ask her if she wanted to turn this into a business. I mean, what a blessing you are, Angel. But I'm so thankful for a faithful leader that's willing and courageous to will to work into an organization and call and check on people and ask some good questions. So Angel, I mean, you shared so many things, really events are key. Did you all get that? Did anybody write that down? Events are key. Did you write down, never give up? Who, who else wrote that down, never give up? Who else practice, wrote down, practice, fail, make mistakes? I mean, come on, there's some nuggets in this, in this talk and this is recorded and we'll post it for you. And people need encouragement. Uh, Angel, that makes that brings tears to my eyes because just a week or two ago, I was asking my heavenly father, who more can I encourage? How can I be a better encourager in my life? And just think about being an encourager to one person a day. And you have encouraged us today in a beautiful, beautiful way by sharing your story. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys can unmute yourself if you want and just thank Angel uh, for what a blessing that we had tonight, Mindset. It's perfect. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Thank Odom you. and thank Maria you. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful thank presentation. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed, thank everybody. You, no, no call next week. Labor Day. Take the day off. Be with your family. Be with your friends. Have a blessed one. Thank you for thank being you, here. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank, thank you, Angel. Angel. Thank you, Angel.